Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the motion for the borrowing of six million US dollars from the African Export Import Bank. But before presenting a brief acknowledgement and support to this borrowing, allow me just one minute to, to set the background to, to this very important borrowing. Mr. Speaker, I speak of yesterday's observance of World Children's Day. And today I want to state publicly that I join the rest of Karen St. Lucians, both here and abroad, in promoting the best care for our children and will continue to do so through the work of my ministry and the Ministry of Education. Mr. Speaker, we are not where we ought to be as it relates to the social development of our children, but we must continue to promote the best practices to ensure that care and development of our children, our, our children is, on, is paramount on the agenda. Mr. Speaker, we must unlearn some of the old stuff and learn new ways to move forward. To parents, Mr. Speaker, let us learn to love our children unconditionally and to find loving ways of correcting Sorry. and nurturing them when they do wrong as opposed to some of the methods that seem more abusive than corrective. But Mr. Speaker, I cannot help but also for us to reflect on the atrocities that are taking place in the world today, particularly in Palestine, Israel where children and babies are victims of useless wars and killings. The purest of human beings are being hurt in every unimaginable way, being killed, some being snatched from their parents, buried on the rubbles alive until they take their final breath. Mr. Speaker, the people who are responsible are not uneducated persons by world standard. On the contrary, they are probably those who attended the best universities and are clothed with all worldly certificates and accolades. That is why I have come to some personal conclusion that as it relates to the current work of my ministry, I have said to all professionals that it does not matter how many PhDs, masters and degrees an employee an employee is decked with. If you do not care about the people of St. Lucia, your effort will not be impactful. So to all of our St. Lucian children, I say, you are beautiful. You have purpose, you have a right to be cared for and nurtured. Mr. Speaker, the Book of Wisdom says children are a heritage of the Lord. Our children are gifts. And speak, speaking of gifts, Mr. Speaker, Proverbs 3.9 says to honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruits of all thine increase. And in recognition of all children's day, I thank God for my first fruit, my first grandchild, my beloved grandson, Benoit Josima Makim, Henry Hyacinth. <laughs> Today, Mr. Speaker, is 20, his 24th day <laughs> since he's here. He came with a stump with a both mark that is shaped like a heart. Mm. Children are truly a loving and lovely gift from God. And Mr. Speaker, to the substantive, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to state this. And for the substantive borrowing, Mr. Speaker, to impact the lives of our children in St. Lucia through the institutions we call schools. Mr. Speaker, it's very innovative that the Prime Minister did not just borrow, but he borrowed to establish a very important foundation. And that foundation is really connecting us to the place where it all started. Mr. Speaker, I've always reflected as I spend time in this house of representing the people of Castro South and in politics. I have come to this conclusion that if you do not know your history, you would not know your friends. 
If you do not know your history, you do not know your enemies. And even if it was 10%, Mr. Prime Minister, and I know you are so careful about how you do financial business, connecting us to the African banks is a positive direction for the development of people in this part of the world. Mr. Speaker, our schools exponentially have reached an age where they are deteriorating. I can tell you that the Bexor Infant School, many years ago, it was asked that this school should be discontinued under the Basic Education Reform Project because in the Bexor Valley there was a massive flood and evidence showed that this ground floor of this building is certainly not safe for children. Today, not only that the ground floor is unsafe, but the building is leaking. And children and the teachers are, are, are doing all they can to maintain an outfit. But during the week, Mr. Speaker, I visited that school with 100 plus children to celebrate Mathematics Day. And Mr. Speaker, I had a glimpse of what our future would be like. And I had to conclude that we are in safe hands as it relates to our children, notwithstanding some of the problems we have today. Mr. Speaker, that is why I support and the Minister of Education, the Honorable Member for Denry North, has demonstrated in recent times his passion, very strategic in terms of how he used the limited resources to advance the work of the Ministry of Education. Mr. Speaker, again, I cannot help but to remember the statement made by the former Prime Minister. Because, Mr. Speaker, it's important for me, and at, there comes a time when we need to go to our people and to vaccinate their mental, you know, what they, have, what they have received from certain persons who are influential. Our people must understand that we care. Our people must understand that we love them our young men in our society no longer believe in government. The people believe that politicians do not tell them the truth. They, there's a, there's a, a, a condition of apathy that they would say, Gwen se buksala ka pale, se buksala pa pale la verite. But I ask to what extent that leaders in politics contribute to this. So when the statement was made with such grandeur and with as if it was so right to tell parents, to tell the teacher, the principal of the school, on the, it is the former prime minister who said it's on record. Tell the parents to come and fix the toilet or else close the school. The, the former prime minister of Mikud South, thank you, thank you. The former prime minister of Mikud South, tell the school principal to tell the parents to come, come here, to fix the toilets or else close the school. Mr. Speaker, I've listened and I've internalized that statement. Do you know, Mr. Speaker, that the parents that he asked to call are the one paying taxes for him to get a salary? Do you know that the parents that he asked to call are the ones who paid the first set of funds in place to fix the school the first time, they are taxpayers. It is not his money out of his pocket that the school was fixed. And I know the same parents at their home, if the children had damaged something at their home, they would find resources to fix it and to continue to love their children. Mr. Speaker, there are some, of our, some men some men, not all, because they no longer have a relationship with the mother. They punish the children. They would no longer care for the children. And I ask myself, when this the Prime Minister call for war upon this country? I've heard him. The former Prime Minister from me, member for Mikud South. Mik, Mikud, Mikud South. He said, get angry. There must be war. There must be no peace. I ask why. But it reminds me that when, but when a father is no longer able to have a, a, a desired relationship with a spouse, 
he decided to turn on the children. He turned on the children. And I asked myself, is it the same thing happening? That because you're no longer in power, or you no longer have the power over Mother Helen, you are now calling for war on the children. Is this what's happening? That if I cannot have her, then the children should perish. Is that what is being called upon? And therefore, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it is important that we vaccinate the minds of our children against such, such thinking because we want they may not always be in power, but we must not ever give up on the well-being of St. Lucians. And I recall one of the most moving times, emotional times in opposition, you know, and uh, I hope the Prime Minister forgive me if I said it. Because it was this, the same member who was then Prime Minister, when a, a, a foreign dignitary came to St. Lucia and last moment invited the, le the mem leader of opposition into a meeting. Yes, it was a, 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 when the me leader of opposition then, the current Prime Minister was invited to a meeting because there was a dignitary in St. Lucia and we went to Sundals to a location. And the Prime Minister said, all of us must go. And we went, yes, to Sandals, to Sandals Latok, the Taiwan, yes. Yes, or not you, you were not there. You were not there. And when we gathered there, <laughs> when we gathered there, even while some of us, some of the uh, members were saying, why should we go? The then Prime Minister said, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Honorable the member for Castries East said, we are going. We are going. The then leader of opposition. He said, we are going. And when he got there, they did something again that was strange. They asked the leader of opposition who invited, they asked him to make a speech. And the Prime Minister, our, our Prime Minister then said, why are you doing this? You invited me, you never said I must speak, but now you're asking me to speak. This Prime Minister, embodied in the same personality he has today, has always been that way. He said, okay, I will speak. He went up, he said many things, but he made a statement that caused every member of the government side to stand up and start to applaud him. He said, our politics is only local. And every one of the members on the other side start to applaud him because there was a level of comfort that there was a, somebody from overseas, a dignitary, and we all look like one. He did not embarrass, he didn't embarrass anybody. That would not happen now. When an invitation is extended, it would not happen now. And I make this point, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, I remember that. I made this point, Mr. Speaker, that this Prime Minister, this side of the government, we are not supporting St. Lucians because we are on this side. We have supported when we were in opposition. Our, our method of opposing was always to do with the benefit of St. Lucians. When we spoke against issues, it had to do with the well-being of St. Lucians. When we saw that over 1,000 acres of land and let me tell you St. Lucians of course would not know acreage and I always reflect because some things do not make sense to the average person in St. Lucia because we are not learned in this thing and until if I wasn't a surveyor I would not know what one acre is you understand but one acre is 43,560 square foot 1,000 of that was given at a dollar an acre when the average price of land to the ordinary St. Lucian is about 10 to $15 a square foot. Not in Brazil, you have to pay. Under the pitons, you have to pay almost 100 US. <laughs> you understand? Where's that? Bananas. I don't know, you know. You understand? But I'm telling you that this is the average price for land by a St. Lucian. But, but, Somebody was offering land at a ridiculous low price. 
Not even the church after slavery got from the crown at that price. You understand? But then when we oppose such a thing, it seemed as if there was a, a problem. No! We were protecting the heritage of St. Lucians. You understand? We were, you know, you know I, am, I am new in this politics. I find it strange that the former prime minister from Mikud South is, is engaging me. We could have a debate some other place, not here today. You understand? But I will tell you, this is what makes the difference. This is what makes a difference. And do not even speak about land. You shouldn't be speaking about land. You know, and this is the thing about it, Mr. Speaker. In St. Lucia, I have lived my life here. I have lived my life. And I've seen people come in St. Lucia and pretend that they know everything. And sometimes our people will listen. Will listen to people who come to St. Lucia and pretend that they know everything. I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, if this member who pretends that he's all knowledgeable about everything did not have the accent that he has, he would not stand a day in this house. I know St. Lucians. But of course, when we could speak smoothly, when we could speak with a sound on our lips, we can fool a lot of people. That I know to be true, not just today. And I'll say it because I believe it. So you know nothing about land. I know about land because I contributed to the new land registry. When I was 21 years old, I contributed to it. I surveyed land. I work at the land registry. I'm a quantity surveyor. I have a first degree and a master's in quantity surveying. You do not know nothing about the things you talk about. You, understand? you want to ask that? You must dissect. You must, you must dissect the portion of land. Well, I would not explain that to you. I'll continue with my presentation. Here is not, here is not at Sir Arthur Lewis. Come up. I was doing cost estimate at Sir Arthur Lewis. If you register, I will do a course with you. But I'm telling you, for the purpose of this debate, for the purpose of this debate, you must not go wrong pretending because you have an accent that you can fool all St. Lucians. But I'm telling you, Bradley, sorry about that. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's when I feel most comfortable. I am saying, Mr. Speaker, I have heard enough. I have heard of land values. I have heard, I've heard the former prime minister opined on, 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 on procurement approaches. I have heard his statement on, 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 on so many things. I am saying... Member for Cassie's office, perhaps I can guide you a little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There are three former prime ministers in here, and you keep referencing former prime ministers. I would suggest you keep to the constituency. Yes, Mr. Speaker, every... Mr. Speaker, the member from Mikul South. The, the member from Mikul South. The member from Mikul South. But Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'm saying this. I'm saying this. That in this part of the, in this part of the world, we have always been vulnerable. We have been vulnerable. There have been lawyers who have come in here and have operated as lawyers and they have no certification in it. <laughs> of course that has happened. There was one somebody we heard they call him guilty or guilty. He wasn't a lawyer. In St. Lucia, we have had engineers who have worked years in government. Years in government. And they were, and they, they were not engineers. They had to disappear. <laughs> We are vulnerable to fakes coming in this country and take advantage of the people. <laughs> and if you're not careful, there are some St. Lucians who believe that if you are good steel bender that you could do um, 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 dental braces. St. <laughs> Lucians are vulnerable. <laughs> so yes, you could have somebody come here and pretend to be the brilliant prime minister. And you're not that brilliant. And I can say that. And many politicians will rise in these chambers. And of course, we'll convince some people. But I dare tell you that the light will shine enough because we have able people to speak. And when the light shines, that cover will be uncovered. And the nakedness of truth will be seen. And people will walk in the light. That's what it's about. So don't, don't, don't I, I cannot, I cannot. And the time is approaching and it's coming near where truth must be seen as truth. You understand? And we must liberate our people from this. 
this entanglement of politics, you understand? I'm, I'm sad that you're leaving because I need to speak more. You understand? This thing about coming and pretending and, and, and saying things, my brother, honestly, sometimes it hurts me. I listen and I just switch off. I do not want to pay attention to this thing because after emancipation, after slavery, we ought not to be listening to some of the things, the treatment of our people. As if it were able to bring the, the same slave ship here, we would pack more people on it like happened before. That is what how we behave. We should enlighten our people, irrespective whether it hurts us or not, because we will continue to move our people forward. It is that that will set a good path for, 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 for governance, not lies. To say remove, remove the, the levy, remove the levy, and you have plans to put it. Mm. And you know that. Come on. But you know you had plans to put the levy. Why are you hiding from that? Because you want power? When a man who wants a woman lies to, to get her, the relationship will not last. <laughs> it will not last. <laughs> and if you want Mother Helen and you're going to deceive her, <laughs> you know, if you're going to deceive Mother Helen just to have that power relationship with her, I dare say to you, that is why you will walk out very soon. That's the nature of the relationship with the people of St. Lucia. <laughs> Our people in St. Lucia, they have gone through quite a bit. Following slavery, hat knocks. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, sometimes within my bosom, I take it and ask myself, when will true liberation come to these people? When will we actually walk in light? But oh yes, when you drink the cup, when you drink the cup of power, you no longer can resist. You no longer can resist having it again. And therefore, you'll do anything to have it again. That is the temptation one must resist, resist if you want true development of our people. So I say, Mr. Speaker, as I've supported our Prime Minister, and I've supported any Minister of Government, and on record, Mr. Speaker, it's only about 10, 15 years since I'm in politics. But I have far more time in the business of governance. And I've been exposed to many prime ministers in government and many ministers. From John Compton all the way, I've met personalities. But I cannot recall ever hearing misinformation like I've heard in recent times to deliberately mislead people. I've never heard that before. Old enough to remember. So Mr. Speaker, anyone who deserves of a seat of power to lead the people must demonstrate that by true caring and speaking truth to the people, whether you're in power or you're out of power. If you cannot do so and you are doing misinformation, then if you do misinformation, you cannot govern with misinformation. And if you cannot govern with misinformation, then you cannot govern. And that is why the past so, I mean, office was so miserable, difficult. You do not believe in investing in poor people. You do not believe in investing in poor people because on your own words you said that not to invest in safety nets, grow the economy first. That's your philosophy. We must grow the economy and when we have resources then we'll take care of the poor. As if you can postpone the cries of ordinary St. Lucians. As if you could postpone and tell them, hold on, they're dead, you cannot help them to bury them. As if you could postpone and tell them, I'm not able to send your children to school. Wait till I build more hotels and grow the economy. That philosophy is a philosophy not even in the US, the mother of all capitalist country that is being, capital, that is being practiced because they are some of the biggest safety net programs you could imagine. And when you came in, you saw that Hey, that there were zero rated food items. While you had reduced VAT by two and a half percent, you were tempted to add VAT on the zero rated items to get the money, but you couldn't because it would have been political suicide. So you made the case in Parliament, and I listen attentively, that we should. This is member for Miku South. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure I'm very happy to give the member all the time he needs. 
to go against uh, my character. But again, he's, he's uh, presuming things on my behalf, and I'm sitting right here, and I'm just, I want to say to you, Mr. Speaker, he's misleading the House. But how is it misleading the House if he is of the belief you attempted to do that? Well, I thought, Mr. Speaker, that members on the opposite side that are in government are going to speak to factual things that they can provide evidence to. But to want to speak about my mind and what I was thinking and why I was doing things is beyond me, Mr. Speaker. No, and, and, and his characterization of what our policies were are completely wrong. I'm trying to understand your point of order. A member says it is his belief that you attempted to do something, but that it would have been political suicide. How does that rise to a point of order? Because, Mr. Speaker, we're in a house in which he is in government, and if he has proof of any document that says that that's what we were going to do, I'm happy for that. But he cannot presume that to be, and particularly when I know that that is completely wrong and false. There was nothing. Well, you can say that. what he said is wrong, but, but I've said that. I don't know how that rises to a point of order. Because he's misleading the House. He's giving the impression to the House. He's that we given his view of your tenure, and he's misleading the House. But, Mr. Speaker, are we here to debate that? He is a member of government. So if, in fact, he wants to discuss my tenure in government, then bring factual information. He is in cabinet. He has access to all the documentation. So if he's going to make those kinds of allegations against me, I would expect that he provides the proof. But what he thinks and how he interprets it without any facts I don't know if that's the case. Member, I, I, I might as well leave the house because we're here for something else. Member, I would rule against that. I don't see the point of order. Please proceed. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker I'm uh, asking you again. Are you saying to me that I have to sit here and obtain a character assassination of no proof yeah, just yeah. based on what the member thinks? So am I allowed to do the same thing now? Am I allowed to think about how lousy I think the government is? And, how, how, and what policies I think that they're putting in without providing you with facts? But you do that all the time. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I find you grossly out of place. Because that's not your place to be at. No. I, I am the one person who has to listen to everybody. Correct. And, and I and hear I you opine, all the time. I opine and provide leadership in this house on the issues, but in order for you to now take an, a side on opinion as to how a person is interpreting my characterization, and you feel there's nothing wrong I'm with I'm not taking a side, I'm and saying... you contribute to it by saying that there's nothing wrong with what he's saying? Come on, Mr. I'm Speaker. saying he's given an opinion all here as to equals. which he's entitled We're to. all here as equals. You do not have the right to opine on my, my character. I'm sorry. Mr. And I'm asking member, you to please withdraw that member statement. For, for for Hold on, Member for Cass, yourself. Take your seat. No, Mr. Speaker, this, I'm asking you to withdraw this the morning, statement member. where you character, you, you gave an opinion member, of my character. Member, that's Prime what Minister, I have to come to this house for. Member, the house, that's please not do not speak speaker. when I'm speaking. That's not the point, Mr. Speaker. Do not speak when I'm speaking. This morning, mm -hmm. the member for Castry South stood on a point of order mm -hmm. that you made a point, it was your view that a young St. Lucian did not receive his job on merit. Mm -hmm. I did not stop you. Mm -hmm. I told the member of Castro South that he did, that you did not cross the line as yet. But Mr. Speaker, that's, that's well, why is it that you think now okay. I am not entitled to say that the member is entitled to his view? Please take your seat, member. No, Mr. Speaker, because that's apples and oranges. Please I take your seat, member. On the member of Castro South, casting please, versions without continue. any facts, and they're being substantiated yes. by you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if this is causing, if this is causing. Mr. Speaker, if this is causing so much injury, can I withdraw that statement? Can I characterizing a member of this house? I withdraw. Right I withdraw if this is causing so much injury. Let me proceed. Injury, Mr. Speaker. Member for Castries Office. Please proceed. Mr. Okay, Speaker, thank you very much. I'm not going to sit down, Mr. Speaker. I'm not going to sit down, Mr. Speaker. I'm asking for the statements to be withdrawn. I, I have no difficulties if a member wants to assert any character assassinated in my party and provide the evidence. But to come to the Mr. House, Speaker, I have withdrawn. Mr. Speaker, I have withdrawn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. So, Mr. Speaker, let me continue. Let me continue, Mr. Speaker. And recently, Mr. Speaker, the member from Mikud South, the member from Mikud South, the member from Mikud South made a statement when he spoke to the fact that the levy should be removed. And the member from Mikud South said, said in the, in the, in the, that 
There should be another way. There should be another way. And, and, and Mr. Speaker, he said instead of taking, instead of the levy, remove the 2.5 levy because there's another way. And in his statement, he said that they can reduce expenditure. It was not clear. Now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I can forgive anyone when they're rushing into the media and making a, a point and, and, and they did not complete a statement. But when you say to withdraw the 2.5%, that is complete and understood. But when it's time to say what you would put in exchange, you, muff, you, you, you muffle it out. You cannot give it. And you thank God at the interview. There, anything I say, sir, uh, Mr. Speaker, you can go on record and you can listen to it. Because I pay attention to what you say. And I have said, here's, a, here's again the, the, the former Prime Minister suggesting to St. Russian public misinformation. We must demonstrate. We must get the 2.5% out. Muripu Fashe, get vet. War, burn houses. You know, and a host of things like that. Not you said it. Not you, not you said it. All of this was said, and, 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 and there's a fervor of destruction to come upon St. Lucia. You understand? Burn St. Jude, somebody had to withdraw a statement about houses and say, look here, we must do whatever it happen, whatever it takes. We must do and create human barriers. We must have matters and sacrifice ourselves because 2.5% levy but what is it we must replace it with that was not given so you ask people to sacrifice themselves for something that they must move but you will not tell them what exactly you will put maybe the same thing maybe something worse or something lower or lower levy and that was not even said in the media or you would have or, or you yeah but you also said when you was talking about VAT in your campaign. You said, we will remove it. And during your reign, you said, before the end of your term, you'll move it. Completely. You understand? You understand? You said that. But what happened, Mr. Speaker? What happened, Mr. Speaker? What happened, Mr. Speaker? I'm just highlighting the construct of deception. Deception. You understand? Deception. St. Lucians must not fall trap to politicians who are not clear on what they want to do. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to complete my statement. I withdraw my statement, but the member will not allow me to speak in silence or listen, you know? But I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, deception, misinformation, is what, how I characterize the Atlantic slave trade. We had to be deceived, our ancestors, to be in the situation we found ourselves. We cannot, after so many years of slavery, to still have within our politics, I couldn't be bothered who, to use slavery as a means, to use misinformation as a means of gaining power. No, I never said slavery. I corrected myself. Misinformation was used for the Atlantic slave trade. And it was used to displace population. Lying to people, telling people it's something better they're going to go to. And all sorts of stories. And there were persons who benefited when our ancestors came here. Today, we're using the same tactics to gain power. Misinformation because of somebody will benefit. I'm looking at you. Yes, I'm in power. And the, yeah. So what I'm saying, those persons who are out of power are setting up the population on a, on, on a, on a trajectory to destroy this country based on misinformation to gain power. And I feel sorry for the people of St. Lucia. I feel sorry for poor people. I feel sorry for the people who are participating in a campaign based on misinformation. Their children need to go to school and, and participate in social studies. And they will not be able to get answers right because of misinformation being spewed by your side. 
You're not enlightening the people. You're not telling them the truth. You understand? Oh, yes, I, I am. Oh, yes, I am. And I'm telling them, I'm telling the people to pay attention to what is factual. We pass VAT, you lower VAT. You said you would remove it, you did not remove it. We passed the 2.5% levy, and I, like I said earlier on, like I said earlier on, Mr. Speaker, can you imagine that laminar hospital is being run annually at about $1.4 billion a year? I can you imagine that? But you're going to come and pretend when levy is raised to increase the basket of goods to us and Russians, you're making it seem like, like it is something else that's happening. So I will tell you something. You're asking question, you know more. You're a matnik and I'm not. <laughs> you know? No, you know more about matnik than me. You were born there, I wasn't born there. You understand? Huh? No, I, my, my mother smuggled on a fishing boat for better. I'm not Matnikan. You are. So you should tell me about Matnik, not, not I tell you about Matnik. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> but you know what about Matnik? <laughs> but you're Matnikan, you're asking me about... <laughs> but you're from Matnik, you're asking me about Matnik. <laughs> but how you're Matnikan asking me about Matnik? How many... I want me see if I come say, yeah, you know, something like that. You know, that's what they will say. You know, in the, in the vernacular of the Frenchman, I want me see if I come say, you know, I don't know about Martinic. You are the Martinic. You know about Martinic, I do not know. You understand? I know nothing about Martinic. I've been there a lot, a lot of time. You understand? And my mom, I think so. I think so. But you've spent more time there than me. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, so, Mr. Speaker, um, I rise to support the borrowing. More importantly, it's from two angles. One, the use of the funds to, to, to retrofit our existing plant. And secondly, the, the relationship with the African Import-Export Bank. These are two pillars of credible, smart governance that will take us to a better future and liberating ourselves from what has happened to us in the past. Thank you very much.